singing, who singing all around, all around. stretch for, stretch for, break for, break for, release me, release enlarge me. my territory, my territory. you heard, so you can see what you said, say what you heard, so you can see what you said, oh pray these words take the lead. 
limits off, take the 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 limits off, take
want to go right in. Hallelujah. Amen. In dealing with our new Bible study series, amen, the art of life, the art of life, all right? And so our theme verse, we're going to come from, we have two theme verses we're going to come from tonight, amen. And this is just an introductory of this Bible series, amen. And so our theme scripture that we will be going with tonight, we have two. The first is John, the 10th chapter, and the 10th verse. John, the 10th chapter, and the 10th verse, and Isaiah 41 and 10. So grab those two scriptures with me right quickly. John, amen, the 10th chapter, and the 10th verse. All right? And it says, the thief does not come. I'm reading the New King James Version. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that, that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. All right? We also coming from Isaiah 41 and 10. Isaiah 41 and 10 states, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. And I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. And I will uphold you with my righteousness right hand. My righteous right hand, rather. Amen. So again, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God, and I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you, and I will uphold you with my right hand, righteous right hand. All right, so that is our theme verses. Our focus verses, amen. What we're going to be focusing on in this whole Bible study series and, amen, tonight in our introduction, coming from Revelation, the 21st chapter, verse 6 through 7. Revelation 21, verses 6 through 7, and it says, And he said unto me, It is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, and I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. All right? And also, Revelations 22 and 13, simply stating, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. All right? And so those are our theme scriptures and, amen, our focus scriptures on tonight. And so we're dealing with the art of life, and to speak right quickly on these scriptures on tonight. Uh, and so with life, amen, we deal uh, with all types of avenues and all types of circumstances, all types of problems, all types of trials, all types of tribulations, all right? And so when we're dealing with the art of life, uh, how do we deal with these things? In other words, how do we live? How do we cope with trials? How do we cope with tribulations? How do we cope with problems that are in our lives? And so the art of life, we're going to dive a little deeper into this, but I want to touch bases on the theme scriptures on tonight. It's saying the thief does not come uh, but to accept, to steal. It is the job of the enemy 
to steal, to kill, and to destroy. All aspects of life, uh, the enemy wants to steal the things that God has implanted in, in, in your life, the, the promises that he has uh, promised you. The devil wants to steal those very things. He wants to steal the very life uh, that Jesus promised you. And he wants to not only steal these things, but he wants to kill and to destroy. And when you kill something and you destroy something, amen, it has no life. Amen. And we can go down to the morgue and we can see life that has been destroyed, amen, by some type of circumstance. And that person is dead. There is no life. In them. You can poke them, you can burn them, you can do anything to them, and they will not move, they will not make a sound. And so, such with the enemy, the enemy, Satan himself, wants to kill the very life out of you. The life that God promised you, the promises that he promised you, amen, the blessing that he promised you, and not only steal these things, but he wants to destroy you. He wants to take you out. Amen. And so why? The question is, is why does Satan want to stop life? Why does he want to not only steal, but kill and destroy? Uh, it is simple that he knows what he lost. And he cannot regain eternal life again. He cannot gain the things of heaven again. And we as people of God, we as children of God, we're set up to inherit, amen, the blessings of God, not just on this earth, but we're set up to inherit a, a, a crown of life which is laid up into heaven on that day. And so it is the job of the enemy to rob us of that crown. It is the job of the enemy to rob us of life. Uh, even on this earth, life with happiness, peace, amen, joy. It is the job of the enemy, amen, to destroy these very things. But notice what Isaiah 41 and 10 says as we go through life. As we go through the things that we're faced with in this life, he tells us to fear not. Why? To fear not. Not to have the spirit of fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear. And so we can go through life, we can go through the things that we're faced with in life and have not fear. Even dealing, dealing with this pandemic and dealing with, with this COVID-19 that is upon the earth, the Bible says, here, fear not, for I am with you. Now, God being, was, being with us, Emmanuel, uh, God with us, God simply being with us is simply uh, letting us have the confidence that uh, he is here. God's presence is not just uh, an ordinary presence. His presence is... Is, is better than the presence of our friends, the presence of our, our relatives, the, the, the presence of, amen, our siblings and what have you. The presence of God is a presence that does not fail. He's there when we need him. We can rely on him. And so it, had, it, it puts us in a place that we uh, does do not have to fear, but be not dismayed, for I am with you. In other words, be not distracted, be not uh, 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 defeated, amen, uh, be not destroyed, uh, be not cast away, he says, for I am with you. And not only am I with you, but I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. And I would uphold you with my righteous right hand. And so everything that God does, uh, the Bible says, is good and very good. And so 
What are we talking about? The art of life. We're going to find out how to live. We're going to find out how to face these things and live in God and be not destroyed and be not allowing the enemy to steal and to take things away from us, but we're going to be more, amen, than conquerors. Amen? Uh, we're more than conquerors. And to establish and focus our mind on that he is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And so everything God is associated in with life. There could be no life without God. There can be no happiness, amen, without God on tonight. There will be no peace, a peace that surpasses all your understanding that will guard your heart and mind without God. And so God has to be in the picture, amen. We're going to get into that. So we're talking about the art of life, and there are seven sessions we're going to deal with in this Bible study series. There are seven, amen, sessions, amen, we're going to deal with in this Bible study series on in the incoming weeks. And so we're dealing with the art of life, all right? Session one, we will deal with the components of life. Session two, amen, we will deal with life challenges, life challenges. Session three, we will deal with the position of grace and mercy. The position of grace and mercy. All right? Session number four. You can write these down. Amen. Session number four, life's contentment. That's what we're going to be dealing with in session number four. Amen. Life and uh, life's contentment. All right? And session five, we're going to deal with suffering. Amen. How to deal with suffering. How to deal with going through suffering. Amen. And how to be uh, overcomers in suffering. All right? And we're going to be diving deep now. All right. Session number six. Session six, we're going to be dealing with life and its temptations. Life and its temptations. Amen. And number seven, overcoming. And so the art of life, the seven sessions, for those that are just coming in, the seven sessions we're going to be dealing with, session number one, the components of life, two, life challenges, three, the position of grace and mercy, Four, life's contentment. Five, suffering. And six, life and its temptations. And seven, amen, overcoming. All right, so let's dive deep into uh, what is art. And so we're talking about the art of life, right? All right, so let's, 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 let's uh, rightly divide this and see what we're talking about here. All right, so when we look at the word art, the word art is generally understood as an activity or product done by people with, uh, with a communicative or artistic purpose, all right? Something that expresses an idea, an emotion, or more generally, a word, a world's view. It is a component of culture reflecting economic and social abstracts in its design. So that's what art is. All right? And so there are seven forms of art. Just follow me right, follow me where I'm going. There are seven forms of art. You have painting, painting, Paintings are made from life experiences, doing life, and emotions. Amen. We can see and artists can capture, amen, their emotions and put it on canvas. And you can actually feel 
what the person is feeling at the time they were painting, amen, the picture. Amen. And so uh, that's one form. Uh, the second form of art is architecture, uh, how buildings are built. And so we can see in the design of a building the, the, the mind frame of the person that built the building and the purpose that the building is for. All right, number three, sculpture. Amen. This deals with images of thought. Amen. How uh, 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 life is brought forth with stone and mortar and, and, and chiseled away. I, I think about Jeremiah. Oh, my God. When God told Jeremiah to go down to the potter's house and, how, and see how the potter, amen, works on the wheel, amen, and he says, cannot not do this with Israel, amen, to mold and to shape them and bring them into what I established them to be. And so, you know, I'm going to go quickly into that right now. Uh, number three, sculpture. And so with the sculptures uh, and, and, and things, you can see the images that is brought forth uh, out of the mind that is sculptured. And so number four, literature. Amen. And so this deals with poems, short stories of how uh, expressions and experiences of life, uh, poems of love, poems of uh, 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 peace, uh, stories of love, stories of drama. And so this is a form of art, amen, that captures the life expressions and experiences. Then you have music. Music is a form of art, and this is a form number five, music, amen. And so you can feel, amen, music that has been written uh, through a series of emotion and life experiences. And so uh, music that we listen to, amen, some songs, have you ever tried it? Some songs you listen to will lift your spirit. Some songs that you listen to Will, will put you in a, a, a thinking mode. And some songs will put you in a worship mode. Some song will put you in a praise mode. And so that is the job of the artist of how the song is written, how it can deliver, amen, the nation to, unto those that listen to it. All right? Then you have, amen, performing. Performing, all right? And this is a form of art. Amen. That is called an expression uh, of the drama of life. And so you can go to plays and plays of comedy, plays of drama, plays of love. And right, and, and through the play, you can you can see the emotion of the person that wrote the play. Amen. You can see their thought process. And then you have cinema, uh, which is the movies. You have uh, uh, life in motion and how. Uh, the process of the mind causes the person that created the movie to be captured on the screen, and therefore uh, it, it deals with us. All right, and so those are the seven, amen, forms, amen, the seven forms, amen, of art. And so when we're dealing with the art of life, all of this is wrapped up in the art of life. All of this is wrapped up in art of, of life. And so life itself, as we said, we face many challenges in our life. We face many things in our life. Amen. Some days are happy days. Some days are days of joy. Some days are days of just peace and tranquility. And then some days, as I was preaching on Sunday morning, Amen. Some days you have the good, the bad, and the ugly. Amen. It seems like nothing will go right. It seems like every day, the day, as soon as the day starts, you have one trial after another. And then it turns into an ugly day uh, when uh, one thing breaks down and you have one a problem after another. If it ain't one thing, it's this thing. And and, and it puts you in a, in a trying mode, and your mind is conflicted, and you don't know which way to go. And so that is what we deal with in life, uh, and that's 
the art of life. And, and so we're going to talk about in the art of life, in other words, how are we we're going to deal with this? How are we going to deal with our emotions? How are we going to deal with of thinking the wrong thing? And how are we going to deal with of acting the wrong way? And so in the art of life, in other words, we're going to learn how to live. And how are we going to learn how to live? We're going to learn how to live through the word of God. And we're going to search the scriptures in this Bible series, and it's going to give us the answer that we've been looking for. Somebody been looking for an answer on how to deal with life situations and how to deal with things of that are happening in our life that we seem we don't have an answer for, but the answer is in the Word of God. The answer is in the Word of God. And so it brings us to God's control in life. I want you to listen to this. It brings us uh, to an element in life where we need God, God's control in life. And so the question is, how does he control our life? Oh, my God. How does he control life itself? So let's look at that. God's control in life. And you want to write this down. Amen. We're going to deal with three elements of God. Amen. In this introduction, we're talking about the art of life and how God is impacted in life. And so the three elements of God that we want to look at tonight Amen. The three elements of God uh, is omni, omnipresent, amen, omniscient, and omnipotent. All right? These are the three, amen, elements of God that we're going to look at tonight. Um, omnipresent, omniscient, and on, on, omnipotent. All right? And so let's look at omnipotence. Let's start with omnipotence, the first element. Omnipotence says means all powerful. All right, God as having supreme power, it means that God does what He wants. He, he, there's no boundary to Him. He does what He seems righteous to do. He's a righteous God. And so, how we can rely on God in this aspect of our life. Is he's all powerful. And so there are elements of our life that we cannot control, such as death, uh, such as uh, things that we may lose. And so these things in this element of life, uh, we cannot control. But we understand that God can help us through these things through the elements of our life, through what we're faced with, because nobody knows what we're going to be faced with from one day to the next day. But what helps us with life and what helps us uh, having God interjected, amen, into our life is that he's omnipotent and that he has all power. It means that he is not subject to physical limitations like a man, amen? And so man is subject, amen, to limitation. His power, amen, can go but so far. And so as I've even mentioned death, we've seen in the Bible uh, that God even overcame death himself. And even uh, there were incidents in the Bible where God stopped the funeral procession and raised a young lady from the dead and how he even called Lazarus from the dead. And so his power is not limited, amen, like man. And so God's controlling element in our life that he is, has all power. And the omnipotent God, God has power over the wind, the water, the gravity, the physics, and, and, and etc. His power is infinite and limitless. And so we can have the confidence Amen. Whatever we're faced with in life, if God is on our side, we have the omnipotent power of God. In other words, we have a God that is not limited, that he can reach where we are and pull us out of the muck and the marrow, 
pull us out of our situation and set us on high. Oh, my God. And so uh, that's the first element we're dealing with. The second element we're dealing with is omniscient. Say it with me, omniscient. And omniscient is simply uh, a God that means all-knowing. In other words, it means all-knowing. God is a God all-knowing in the sense that he is aware of the past, the present, and the future. Oh, my God. God knows your past, the present, and the future. And so how does this interject in our life? Like I said, we don't know where we're going from the next minute to the next. But God can order our steps. He's an all-knowing God. And so he can supply us with the knowledge of where we're going when we seem like there is no direction in our life, when it seems like there is no peace in our life, when it seems like everything is out of control, God will use his knowledge and his wisdom, and he will guide us into the areas, amen, that we need to go in. And so he's an omniscient God. He's an all-knowing God. He knows uh, what happened in the past. He knows what's happening in the present, and he can guide us, amen, to our future, all right? And so he knows all things. And so that's the confidence that we can have in God, in God that he is all-knowing. And so the third element we're going to deal with, amen, is omnipresent, meaning he's present everywhere all the time. This term means that God is capable of being everywhere at the same time. So the limit, the limit power of man is I can be on east side of Tampa and I can't be on the west side of Tampa at the same time. I can be on the north side of Tampa and yet cannot be on the south side of Tampa, amen, at the same time. But God being a God with an omnipresence, he can be on the north side, east side, west side, south side, at the same time delivering his people out of their circumstances at the same time. Now watch this. Our mind cannot uh, 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 conceive this, but even in Tampa, God can be in North Carolina. God can be over in the international waters. He can be in France. He can be in India. He can be everywhere at the same time. So uh, what that lets me know is that when I call on God, he'll be right there. Oh, my God. Uh, there is no limitation. I may call on you, and you may have call waiting and don't want to answer the phone, but God will answer my call. There is no call waiting. Oh, my God. There is no uh, delay. Uh, it may be delayed, but it's never denied. Come on. And so with God, there is an omnipresence of God. There is an omnipresence of God. And so dealing with the art of life, if we have God as the key point in our life, he's omni, omnipresent. Ah, he's omniscient. Amen. He's omnipotent. And so all of these attributes of God will be interjected in our life, and we can learn how to live. Notice what he told his disciples. He said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So how can we have this abundant life? That's the question on tonight. The art of life uh, in other words, the canvas of life, we're faced with many attributes and many things of life, but how can we live when we're faced with so many circumstances? And so I'm here to let you know tonight, the art of life is God interjected into your life, the omnipotent God, the omniscient God, the omnipresent God. And so let's look at nine attributes of God. This is just an etch. This is just an introduction, amen, to our Bible series tonight, amen, the art of life. And so they are, there are nine attributes of God. 
I want you to write this down. There are nine attributes of God that we can look at on tonight. There are many attributes, but we're just going to focus on nine of them. Number one, God is unique. There is no one like God. There is, I will say it over and over again, there is no one like God. God is unique. There is no God like Yahweh. In other words, uh, he can't be duplicated. He can't be replicated. Come on. When we think that God is going in one direction, he can go in a totally different direction. And we, you know, the word of God just gives us a sense of who God is. And I want you to find that the word of God gives our mind a sense of who he is when we look through his scriptures and look through his word. But there is heights and depths to God that we don't even know about. Amen? And so the great thing about this attribute of God is, is he's a unique God. And so he will touch your circumstances and areas in your life that will specifically deal with you. Oh, my God. He will touch, I'll say that again, he will touch specifically the things in your life that you're dealing with which will cause you to live and not die. Now, he may deal with me totally on a different manner. That's the unique and powerfulness of God. All right? Number two, God is infinite. As we just said, I'm omni, omnipotent. God is everywhere, unlimited, all-powerful. We just went over that. Number three, God is eternal. In other words, God always, always is, he always was, and he'll always be. Now, God is eternal. He is, was, and will always be God. And so nothing neglects his power. His power is not diminished. Uh, he doesn't run out of power. I may run out of resources, but God does not run out of resources. All right? He's eternal. God is, number four, God is immense. Amen. Number six, God contains all things. Everything we can get belongs to God. Everything he allows us to uh, consume belongs to him. Everything uh, tangible that we can touch and see belongs to him. Even our spirit that dwelleth down on the inside of us belongs to him. And so God contains all things. When you look at the wind, you can see God. When you look at the trees and creation, <coughs> you can see God. When you look at the sun shining, you can see God. Even when you look at the rain falling, you can see God. God is immutable, all right? He does not change. And, 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 and uh, he is a God that everything he says, amen, will take place. And so he's immutable. And so uh, he doesn't change. He's a God that doesn't change. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. And so God is utterly simple, a pure spirit. And so God is a righteous spirit. He's a pure spirit. And so uh, nothing but the pure in heart shall see him. And so if that is the case, that it lets us know that we can't enter into his presence unless we have a pure mind and a pure thought. And so God is personal. God deals with every man according to his ability, according to the level of his faith. And so he's a personal God. 
he'll get into your personal situation and you can tell him and he won't tell nobody else. So the art of living is wrapped up in these attributes of God. And so we're laying the foundation tonight, the introduction of the art of life, laying the foundation that God has to be our foundation. Uh, all right. And so in other words, and how we're going to live, we're going to live through God. We're going to live how he explained us. Listen, there is nothing hid under the sun. Whatever, and we'll get down into that as our series go. I don't want to, amen, get into that right now. But to touch briefly on that is whatever happened before, it will happen again. And God has full control, full knowledge of it. And so uh, the, the coronavirus may have snuck up on some of us, but it did not sneak up on God. Amen. COVID-19 did not sneak up on God. It may have snuck up on us, and, and, and we're learning how to deal with it, amen, through the power of God, and God giving the knowledge to doctors, amen, and not of themselves, but the knowledge that he's given them is only going so far, all right? And so it lets us see that everything is constructed by God. Everything, amen, is instructed by God. And so, God in life. Let's go to this. God in life. And so, how is God in our life? How is God in life itself? How is God in life itself? So, let's look at God in life itself. God in life is himself. Oh, my God. God in life God in life itself. I'm talking about life itself. Not your life, my life, but life itself. Watch this. Number one, we're going to deal with God in creation. Let's look at God in creation. Genesis, amen, one, and one says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth, watch this, the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. All right. And so with this, and you can go through Genesis, the first chapter, the second chapter, and the third chapter, and you can see everything that was created by God. They want to say we came from apes and all of this stuff. If that is the case, who created the ape? Oh, my God. Who created the ape? But that is not the case. God in creation. Watch this. God in creation. And so as you read the first chapter of Genesis, it lets you see. He created the beasts of the field. He, he, he created the fowls of the air. He, he created, amen, he separated night, amen, uh, darkness from light and called darkness night and called light day. And he separated uh, the waters. And, and so in the beginning, it says God created the heavens and the earth. Watch this. The earth was without form. So... If the earth was without form, it had to take something powerful to create it. It had to take something powerful to set things in order. Amen. And so the hand of man could not set, uh, create, oh, my God. The hand of man could not create something out of nothing. Oh, my God. But it was God that created something out of nothing. And that same power is resident here today, residing with us today to speak, amen, something out of nothing, the art of life, something out of nothing. And so God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth without form, was without form, and it was void. 
and there was darkness upon. There was nothing here. But yet God speaking and a life came to an, into existence. And God can speak into your life and bring you out of the voidness of life. He can bring you out of the voidness of life. And so, Genesis 2 and 7 says, and God formed, this was where we come in at, God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Mm, the art of life. Look at this. Man became, amen, a living soul. And so it was not God formed man, he created man, and man was just sitting there, void, with no life, void, could not move, void, could not talk, void, could not hear. But it was the breath of life, God breathing into the nostril of man, the breath of life. So, in that breath of life, there's happiness, peace, joy, tranquility. And we're going to go through all of this. This is the art of life. This is the art of living. God breathing the breath of life into the nostrils of man, and man became a living soul. Man begins to talk. Man begins to walk. Man begins to hear. Man begins to listen. Man begins to see. Man begins to work in the garden. And so, in creation, something out of nothing. Oh, my God. And I'm speaking to somebody tonight. God will make something out of nothing. You, you, you're not living unless you're living with God. You're not living unless you have the peace of God on the inside. You're not living unless the breath of life is in you, the spirit of God. Listen, that's God in creation. Now, the second piece of God in life is God in redemption. Look at this, God in redemption. And so there was no one that can save us when we disobeyed God. Yet, at one time, man was in direct communication with God. For the Bible tells us that Adam, every day in the cool of the day, Adam, amen, communicated with God. In the cool of the garden, God talked with Adam every day. But there was something, amen, that interrupted the communication with God. There was something that interrupted, amen, the one-on-one-ness with God. And so we understand and know what it was. It was the disobedience, amen, of Adam and Eve that caused a separation between us and God. Now, life was good. Listen to me, the art of life. Listen, life was good. Everything man could have, it was good. Vegetables grow. There was water in the garden. Uh, 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 there was animals in the garden. And so uh, uh, man, a man, lived off of the garden. And so he didn't have to work. Amen. The, the mist came from the ground and even watered the garden. And so man did not have to work. He did not have to produce anything. God set everything in order and produced everything that man needed. But when man disobeyed God, it interrupted the art of life. Oh, my God. When man disobeyed God... It interrupted the art of life. The art of life was God was there. God was talking with man. God provided everything for man. God placed everything in order the way it should be. But through the dis 
obedience, obedience, disobedience of mankind, meaning man and woman, amen, it interrupted the curriculum of God for life. It interrupted, amen, man began uh, to thirst for flesh now. Animals begin to fight one another now. Uh, the flesh, uh, the, the appetite for flesh begin to come into play. Sin uh, brought all of this into play. And there needed to be something, amen, to redeem man back unto God. That word redeem means to bring back, uh, uh, to, to, to bring back to its former glory. What was the former glory of man? That man was in direct contact and communication with God. And when sin separated us from God, there needed to be someone to come and redeem man back to God. It could not be done by bulls and heifers. It could not be done by a, a sacrifice. Who can go for us? Who would go for us? And so uh, the scripture says, that God, in his infinite wisdom, amen, came down through a virgin Mary. We know the story. And began to talk, amen, to Joseph and let Joseph know. The angel began to let Joseph know uh, 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 that to take Mary as his wife. And begin to even talk to Mary and tell Mary that she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save the people for from their sin. And so the redemption, God and redemption, Titus 2 and 14 says, Titus 2 and 14 says, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. And so it was God's power, amen, through Jesus Christ, him dying on the cross from our sin, redeeming us back to the place where God desired us to be in the first place. So that's number two. And number three is the Holy Ghost, amen, presiding today. The Holy Ghost presiding today. So that's God in creation, God in redemption, and the Holy Ghost presiding today. John 16 and 13 says, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not, he shall, for he shall not speak of himself, but whosoever shall hear him, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. That is the Spirit of God. That is the Holy Ghost that lead us and to guide us into all truth. He told the disciples, I will go away, and I will go and return to my Father, and told them to go into Jerusalem, and, and, and go into Judea, and go into the upper room, and you shall receive power from on high, and the word of God says in Acts that uh, the spirit of God came like a rush of mighty wind and sit upon them uh, clothing tongues, and they bespeak as the spirit gave them utterance. And so the spirit of God speaks as the spirit gives utterance. We speak as the spirit of God gives utterance. The art of life is, is that we live as the Spirit of God give us utterance. We live as the Spirit of God leads us and to guide us. All right, so the three, God in creation, God in redemption, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost presiding today. Amen. And so this, this is the introduction, amen, of the art of life and what we're going to be dealing with in this series. And we bless God for you understanding with us tonight as we walk through the word and talk about the art of life, amen, what we're going to be dealing with in this Bible series. And next week, if the Lord stays the same, we're moving to our first session, 
amen, our first session, the components of life. Amen. That's our first session that we're going to be dealing with. Amen. The components of life. All right. And so what did we learn tonight? We learned, amen, that there are three attributes of God. There are nine attributes of God. Amen. And three, amen, uh, components of God. Amen. Dealing with life. Amen. Omni, um, omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. Amen. We're dealing with those on tonight. Just recapping for the ones that are coming in. We also were dealing with, amen, how God deals with life and how we deal with life and how we're going to learn how to deal with the different avenues of life and what we're faced with. And, and, and nothing will overthrow us. Nothing will uh, kill us. We won't, we, we, we're going to stop allowing the enemy to steal and take the things that God has given us. And God's going to restore us. He's going to put us in the rightful place that we should be in life. You know, and a lot of us don't know how to live life. We, we think life living is a car that we drive or a house that we have. I, I've noticed over and over again many many uh, uh, actors that have all of this stuff and have millions and millions and billions and trillions of dollars, and yet they can't find peace. Yet they can't find tranquility. Yet they can't even find love. They're, they're, they're jumping in one marriage, out of the next marriage, and they're, they're doing all of this. And so uh, it lets me see they don't know the art of life. They don't know how to live life. Living life is not just having a mansion on the hill. Living life is not just having a fine car. Living life is not just having a millions of dollars in the bank or, 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 or girlfriends or fiancés and, 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 and chicks on the side and all. That's not living life. Living life is living life, if that really makes sense. Living life is knowing how to live life, knowing how uh, when I'm faced with adversity, what can I do uh, that I don't revert to drugs, that I don't revert, amen, to alcoholism, that I don't uh, revert to pornography, that I, I don't revert, amen, uh, to human trafficking, that I, I don't revert, amen, to prostitution. And all that is not living life. And so, what is the essence of life? Where does life come from? It comes from God. And so, when we recognize the essence of life, when we recognize the key component to the art of life, simply how we're living is through God. It's through God. And so, uh, life brings, amen, positive emotions, negative emotions. And so, we're going to learn how to channel, amen, the positive emotions. We're going to learn how, amen, to, to, to look into the Word of God and pull the nuggets out that we need that we can become more than conquerors. And so, that's what we're dealing with, amen, the art of life. That's what we're dealing with, people of God. And so, we got to purify ourselves. We got to purify what God has in store for us. We got to purify what God wants to do in our life. And uh, we got to let the power fall in our We got to let the power fall in our lives, people of God. And we're going to prove that that was wrong, that God is still mighty, and that he's still strong. And so we hope we have said something that you can deal with tonight on the art of life and this introduction. 
And so, people of God, no matter what you're faced with, God is going to cause you to be a winner. He already conquered the things of this world. And he's going to show us how to conquer them in this series. And so, we simply need to call on God. If we want to get through the things of this life and get through the things that's happening, we simply, amen, got to rely on God. We hope we have said something to you tonight that will cause you to think about life. Life even as we know it. Life even as we're experiencing it right now. And so, God will just call us to be amen, winners but not losers. Alright? So we Praise God, and we hope we have said something that will bless you on tonight. Amen. Explaining where we're going to be going through in this series and the avenue God's will for your life. You know, sometimes we think, amen, that God wants us to go in a certain direction, but it's really our emotions talking. It's really our feelings talking and we're not listening to the voice of God. For if we would listen to the voice of God, we would not go wrong. The art of living is being successful in life. We have mastered, amen, living according to the way God wants us to live. And the only way we can master that is if we listen to his voice. Not listening to our emotions, not listening how we feel, but we listening at the power of God. And we can't go wrong. We can't go wrong. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we ask God that you bless your people on tonight. We ask God that you continue to have your way in their, in their life. We ask God you continue to move in their life. God, let this word that has went forth tonight that they may examine themselves. And God, as we go forth through this series, God, let somebody's life be impacted. Let somebody's life, God, be saved. Let somebody's life be set free in the precious name of Jesus. And God, we give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor belongs to you. People of God, thank you for listening. Visit us on YouTube, L-O-T-W-C, Space I-N-C. Continue to watch us, amen, live on Facebook, amen. Come in, even visit us here at Live the World Church. We're open for full service. We have the necessary things in place that will can protect you, amen. Hand sanitizer. You must wear your face mask, amen. And we have disinfectant that we disinfect our building every day. Amen. At the end and before every service. Amen. And so we're looking for God to do something great in your life. And we're looking for God, amen, to take you higher than never before. And people of God, continue to listen to us. If you're in the Tampa Bay area, listen to us. W-T-A-N. Amen. Listen to us. W-T-A-N on your 1340 a.m. dial every Sunday morning at 945 to 10, to 10 a.m. Amen? So we're looking for God to do great things in your life. We're looking for you, amen, to be an overcomer and a winner. We're looking for you to press towards the mark. We're looking for God uh, to impact your life. Amen. And we're looking for you to no longer... Amen. Be ignorant, as Paul says, but we're looking for you, amen, to learn in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and be, amen, the son and the daughter that he's calling in his last and evil days. Amen? And so we thank you, and we bless the Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Don't forget... Amen. To call our prayer line. Amen. Call our prayer line Monday. 
Thursday and Friday. Call our prayer line and let God do something for you in your life. Hallelujah. We thank you once again. Blessed be unto you, and we will see you next week if the Lord say the same.